<laughs> that voice right there. Ooh. 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 You got to give I it say up it, short. I say it, man. This man personifies everything that Northern California is about. I tell you, Manny, I celebrate him because of the way he celebrates us. He's an ambassador. He's a truth speaker. He's 10 toes down. He's one of our leaders. Yes. Easily. He's a griot. He does it all for us as he represents the Bay Area. Come on, man. He's done put it down for so many years in so many different ways. You know, a lot of people come to him when they're trying to explain or understand what it is, that magic that we produce out of the Bay that never really been properly represented. I don't think it's ever been properly celebrated, but we don't look for validations from others. We get it from ourselves. Amen. Okay? And that's why we always been independent-minded and able to stand on our own ten, ten toes, even when the music business wasn't signing Bay Area artists. Uh, the music business wasn't giving Bay Area credit. That's all old narrative, all old conversation. We don't need that validation. We did it independently and did it ourselves. So when I say he's the very personification of what Oakland is in the Bay Area, Tracy G, I tell no lie. I got to welcome him back to the show, the uh -huh. one and only Mr. F.A.B. Come hey. on, man. He didn't come along. He got an international superstar with him. Fab, who's that, man? That's the hunk, man. Oh, man. Hump, what up? What's up, baby? Yeah. I love y'all. Um, a citizen, a family <laughs> member, a little brother. Um, you my mentor, Tracy G. And, and Heather, man, y'all y'all add so much to this, the dynamics of, of just what we represent, man, in black culture, man. This is this is iconic. And for us to be here, man, the last time we were together, we were at the White House. Oh, shit. Uh, Damn. Doing, that was huge, man, being able to be at the White House. What? Being, being staples in the White House of what we were representing at that moment and at that time. That's right. Um, for us to be here right now, and this is... Um, we definitely appreciative of the moment, man. I um I appreciate you taking your time out, bro, <laughs> come to on, come man. in and you know I love the politician right here. I love yeah. you know you just know just, just in genuineness, man. <laughs> yeah. Like um, hey man, we 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 add so uh to defray what we have, what we actually add to each other mm -hmm. is that value. He spoke on that in the infancy stages of this, but that value of what we have to have. The first value comes from family and friends mm -hmm. of people. That's where we recognize that value when you you know when your son. Or your daughter or your mother or your father when they value you and they pour that value into you that that means a lot um and and that's what it's all about right now and as as one of the the new uh ambassadors of our area man i want to continue to kind of defer that to the young generation that's that's doing their thing now and that's what it's all about for me man being able to show those young guys Hey man, value yourself. Y'all are value in what you're doing. Even though the major labels may not be coming, even though the, the 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 mainstream radio may not be playing your records, what you guys are doing to go from your government name uh -huh. to your artist name and people recognizing that that alone is should be valued, man. So big shout out to all the artists that are from our area doing things and abroad around the world, man. That's continuing to keep taking their dreams and making it other people's reality. It, mm. I love it, man. Uh, Mr. FAB, you hear this, young man. Is the Bay Area like New York once was or like Atlanta once was or like Houston once was? Is the Bay Area the 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 mecca of the music industry, in your, in your opinion? I think of the independent uh, okay. music industry. Um, it's always, we've always flourished as independents. We've always had... Um, the Too Short, E-40, Andre Nicotina, Mac Dre mentality that, we're that we were able to just say, we're going to get up and go get it our own. Um, we've watched several floors from that. JT, the bigger figure, who implemented the, a super independent hustle. And mm -hmm. Master P, a lot of those guys mirrored some of the things that they were, the blueprint that they were laying down. Um, but, yeah, nowadays, you know, you have Ga uh, Ghazi with Empire, and he's like, He's a he's a, I like to call it like a middle pendant. He's an independent and he's a major and they've conflated and, and, and in that conflation what they've been able to do is the birth of several artists that you get a chance to see. Guys, he's doing a hell of a job giving some of these young guys an opportunity to even have their music heard on these different platforms. And there's a plethora of artists in several different genres in the Bay Area that are striving right now, yeah. man. You know, um, 
uh, amongst you would normally see Oakland or you would normally see, you know, San Francisco. But now you have all surrounding cities that have their spokesmen. We have the, uh, you know, the Vallejos with mm -hmm. La Russell's, the Antioch's with the uh, the Simba's and, mm -hmm. you know, the Richmond's with the Cash Click Bugs and the, you know, the Berkeley's. And there's different artists, man, that are that are definitely just flourishing from the music side. And then on the media side, you have things like Little Blood TV, mm -hmm. which is, you know, to me, he looks like. The next sway in the making. If oh, you get snap, a chance to check out Lil Blood TV, okay. it's super raw and cut media um, alongside with Lord Rab and the No Vultures. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to continue to just curate and cultivate yeah. our own media, our own independence. Like, we may not ever be major artists, but if you can look at what a Filthy Rich or a Jay Stalin has done with their artists and their collective and what they've been able to build, the maturation of all of that hard work, hey man, you put us side by side with any major artist, you won't be able to tell who's the major artist. There you mm. go, Dregs One, shout out to him. For uh, sure. Killer Fonte, you know, Real Repti, yes. uh, Two Juice, Quasi, they whole movement that they have going. One of the things you did that I find fascinating and I admire you for, and all of us had to do it, Too Short sure had to do it, 40 had to do it, all of us that came from a certain era had to do it, you picked up the game from it, is you expanded, I won't say reinvent yourself, but you expanded your brand uh, to where people didn't know you just as a songwriter and an MC. At what point in your career did you decide to do that? Why did you decide to do that? And how did you do it? Uh, it was a few things that was going on in the Bay Area um, that forced that. Okay. Uh, with me musically. Um, and, you know, I like to bring up the if you know, you know. If you don't know, it's no need to backtrack and go through that. Um, I'm not here to kind of reread certain chapters of life. But in this new book, that was that, that forced the hand. And uh, and I had to go write for others. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there were there was something that was going on in my life at that time that wasn't giving me a chance and opportunity to talk to my people as I as I would like. Um, so I began writing for others, um, disguising my influence. I began writing records for others, and that's what birthed the songwriting, um, which later led led to you know plaques and some experiences from that, which was super dope, um, and it was very opulent. And then. From there, we, we dove into the community and we moved that in droves by what we were able to do for the people. You know, um, there was it, it was it was cloudy for me at a chance, man. It was it was real lugubrious, man. And it was it was it was I was stuck and I just dove into the community, the backpack giveaways, the charity and all of those things, which was the community restoration of uh, just building that up, which gave the people like, oh, this is the, the native son who's coming back, giving back to the community. And then the clothing line sparked with with crypto and duct tape and my brother, rest in peace, to G Field. And we just hit the line with the dope era. And that's where I felt like yeah. we took branding seriously mm -hmm. because everything at that moment I took a page out of Master P's book. It was just, it's Dope Era everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's we just bought the Dope Era Museum. It's a hip hop museum um, that we're launching Come on. Uh, this summer in Jack London Square, the hip hop museum where I definitely have, I'm, I'm going to surprise you, but since we're here now and I have an exhibit, a sway exhibit where oh, there's shit. a painting uh, yes. just dedicated to you, like, you know, to, to my heroes. So my heroes are <laughs> Huey Newton, MC Hammer, Too Short. And Sway Calloway. Wow. And so there's, it's like a mausoleum that will be dedicated to you in the hip hop museum oh, of what brother, we were in. Yeah. So cry, that's Sway. <laughs> for real. Because I'm about so, to cry. For real. Cry. For real. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, that's, the, no that's, that's the Dope Air Museum. Wow. And then it's, um, we have the Dope Air Academy for the school that's launching this summer. It's something that we've been doing. Mm. Unc and myself have been super dedicated to making a difference and de digging in with these kids and taking them to you know field trips amusement parks museums camping trips fishing trips and now we're going to launch the campus which will um kind of like allocate that same care and concern with these children and the cultivation of entrepreneurialism and other things that are going to be and changing the narrative pouring value into these children that don't recognize their greatness and extracting that out of them. So that's the Dope Era Academy, the Dope Era Clothing Store. We just opened up the nightclub. The which club. Is, the club is directly across the street from our clothing store, Yeah, um, which is named after my mother. My mother always wanted a club. So Club Desi's, that's been something that's been rocking and rolling to be one of the only black successful club owners that has his liquor license and things like that, all legitimate 
that's a, a pat on the back as well for myself just to be able to say, wow, look at what we're doing in a city that they said this couldn't be done. Wow, that's amazing, bro. Mm. Yes, yes. So we're some, doing it. Like, we could have easily moved away and yeah. uh, sought after, you know, lower rates and cheaper prices for rents and things of that nature. But we're we're maneuvering in one of the most expensive places in the country yeah. and still opening up businesses. And this is coming out of a pandemic where several businesses failed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. horribly mm -hmm. and for us to have the support from the community and, and still pour in man um what we're doing uh I'm, I'm humbled by it and i'm appreciative but i think what i'm most thankful for is the support that we have from my immediately fa my immediate family with mm -hmm. unk the hunk unk the hunk man worldwide real, baby yeah like, he walking into do the hey hunk. man this man walking to any door and get love man the hunk. come on man timo my yeah. sister timo Yo, what's, what's, tay dollar What's it like for you, man, growing up in the town and just seeing your nephew do like what what you see in the change that's come from the moves and the and the investment that you guys have made? Well, how, how does it feel for you? Because you you've had a your own life, you know what I mean. You face your own adversities, and here you are. Well, for me, um, just being able to see these things um, continue to give me hope and, and inspires and motivates me to continue to push and be a better person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I just feel like um, at this point I'm like um, like a part of the tree. Uh -huh. So I, I also have my own um, works and efforts and things that I need to do to make sure that we look good at all times. You uh -huh. know, with me coming from, you know, going in and out of prison to using drugs to just, you know what I'm saying, um, having one class in school so, you know, I ain't going to be able to be talking like he using the big words. Like that. <laughs> but, you know, I have my own story, so I have my own um, I have my own angle of how I go um, try to attack the problems that we have in our city streets yeah. with the young guys, you know what I'm saying, because I we, we have different experiences kind of, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying. He have what he's been through in life as far as musically and the um, struggles and things that he had along his past, and then I have my own personal um self-destruction um things that i've been through that you know what i'm saying that i went about why are you so nervous swinging your feet and stuff why are you in my business <laughs> you know what you know i had one class in school man so when i get on the spot i get nervous nigga. <laughs> I get nervous. this ain't like the resource class nigga. it's just kind of in depth no but but you but see unk is a real oakland story you know like it's you know you you been through a lot, done a lot, and you're doing a lot, man. I see you overseas, and you have a way of communicate with people. You walk in rooms where people don't know you, right. and they feel like they know you and love you. Yeah, I guess it's just um, I'm, when you've been through so much in life, you just want to be a light to everything. So yeah. when you go in there, you just want to be like, hey, hey, like, like I just want to bring positive energy into anything that I operate with and anything I walk in. I just try to be me. I just try to be happy, excited. You know, I'm a little tired. I was up all night at Starlet, so, you know. Oh, oh. damn, man. You have work to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yo, yo, whatever happened with that 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 chip you ate? That hot, oh, that oh. hot chip. <laughs> yeah, that, what, <laughs> I ate that hot chip for 500 Did you eat it? Did I you? ate it for 500 It was hot, but, you know, um, <laughs> I done done a lot of work shit for 500 so the hot chip... <laughs> A hot chip wasn't going to be nothing. Hot, what? Give it here. Hurry up. The boy like, said, I got 500 for you. Man, pass what? it. Pass it. Man. Yo, you were sweating, though. I saw that. Man, you know, um, like I say, when you when you have a uh, a dark path, a hot chip ain't nothing. Like, <laughs> boy, if you know what I've been through, you would have tried to give me about five of them at one time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He wouldn't have been talking about that just no a, one. That was an easy 500 for you, huh? Most definitely. Where, 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 in y'all travels, what was the most, uh, for you, uh, fulfilling place? a place that you you know you was most surprised I can't believe I'm standing here I mean I never if you want to be honest um what I come from you know what I'm saying what I've been through in life I probably never thought that I was going to be able to travel the world I never yeah. I never was inspired to go anywhere you know what I'm saying I was cool with right there once I got clean I was just cool with being clean in my area you mm -hmm. know what I mean mm. and my nephew you know what I'm saying said come on I'm going to make you and I'm going to show you and I'm going to take you around the world so you can experience life so um mm. I think like uh Cuba was one of the best spots Cuba. that I liked it the most. Wow. Because I went it was, to Cuba, bro. Yeah, so Cuba, Cuba was, was different. Dope. Yeah. Yeah, it was The a food lot was great. What? The, the greatest. And yeah. the people was great. You yeah. know what I mean? And um just to um be there and understand 
some of the things historically that they had been through to be where they was at in life and understand that they were self sufficient. Like it was a it was a place like we had an Airbnb and I used to go on the uh, roof of the Airbnb and just look down because kids were still playing outside. Yeah. Like nobody was nobody was checking for a cell phone. We didn't even have a cell phone. Like we couldn't even you we had to go way downtown, get the Wi Fi card, scratch it, you get an hour on your Wi Fi, you know what I mean? On your um whatever we was using. So it really gave us it gave me the opportunity to to slow down and just focus on what I was trying to do in life because for a long time I was lost. Like even uh -huh. even when I was trying to um even once I got clean off drugs, it still took me five, six, seven years to find myself. Uh -huh. So people used to say, like, man, Unc laugh, he joked. Like I never used to talk. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like I I when people came around, I'd just always be I'd be like for him, I'd be like, let me see who the bad guy is. Let me see who's trying to use him. Like, I was so caught up in that that, and then I, but it gave me time to, like, try to figure out who I was again because I had lost myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to say it more so. Maybe I hadn't lost myself. I haven't never, I hadn't had the opportunity in life to find uh, myself. Yeah. You know what wow. I'm saying? So yeah. I never even knew who I was, period, mm -hmm. because I was so busy trying to be a version of everybody else I've seen. Yes. You know, sometimes you will look up to the wrong people, so you will pick up the wrong stuff, so you will start inquiring that to you, and you'd be like, man, it didn't work for you because it wasn't you. Yeah. So I had so much in me that wasn't me because of me trying to follow behind and chase behind the wrong lifestyle, so my role models was wrong. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep. So the things that I learned from them, I had to unlearn, you know what I mean? And I and in the process of unlearning, you'd be like in a blank space where now you don't got you don't want this information, <laughs> but now you got to try to find out who you are, and that's kind of like where my struggle was at. Wow. You know, so being in Cuba, like, allowed me to be, like, like, it was a long run of me trying to figure it out. So I was like, no phone, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we all get caught up in the Matrix, so now I can really, like, just can't call nobody. I ain't got to worry about nobody. You found yourself in Cuba? Maybe so. Hmm. I don't know. I never knew that. I just, I mean, it's like where I was, like, you know, it was, and the kids was playing. It was just, like, a lot of stuff that was from my era of being a kid was yeah. still going on. Yeah. Kids was outside, push, one little kid sitting on the skateboard, his brother pushing him. Uh -huh. Like, it was just stuff that was... Grounding, that, almost, right? Yeah, mm. I could, kind of something like that. That's amazing, man. <laughs> Shit, damn, oh, damn. damn. You went damn. from not Trick, saying nothing to damn Trick. saying everything. <laughs> damn, I don't even want to ask Fab nothing. <laughs> It's the Hawk interview. Make sure y'all check out Hawk. <laughs> nah, I love Shut it, man. Yeah, man. No, I just think it's important that, you know, sometimes people will get caught up in who they see you is for today. Right. And they won't know who you was before. So once they get an idea, once I'm transparent, like, I'll tell you anything. I'll tell you I got dentures. I'll tell you, like, I don't care. <laughs> you got about, dentures up? Yes, I don't got, see, I don't oh, got damn. no bottom <laughs> Damn, you showed it. I don't never got no bottom jeans. <laughs> But I'm so I'm out. Self take, I'm out. Listen, listen, nephew. Nephew. Nephew, but that's confidence. Right. I don't mind. It don't care. It. it don't care what nobody else. Oh, you, you, look, you had to leave it at that point. Heather just left the building. Hey, she, she got it. She might she she might know what them gums do. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Hey. He was talking about my roadkill earlier today from my earlier life, Oak, so I understand yeah. what you mean yeah. with your past yeah. life and everything, but I'm clean now. I love y'all citizens. Have a beautiful weekend. I'm She's going to Irving View. View. She's going to Irving I love View. you so much, mm -hmm. Heather. Thank I love you, you too. Wait, hold on, Perk. Go Sacramento. Heather. You hear that? Did you hear what she said? Yo, fast face. You right see now. what she said? Go the, Sacramento. Why, why you acting because, like this? We, we, because, we said we wasn't going to start like this. The Spurs not in there, nephew. Oh, that's Spurs, why she out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it makes sense. I'm it's, out because yeah, the Spurs, yeah, the Spurs out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I told her that the whole season before she go, the whole season, I said, we don't play for the regular season. We play for the playoffs. Hey, yeah. y'all getting like the number one pick, though, so don't, you feel me? Y'all's like one of the worst teams in they the league this year. I'm going to get some Big shout out. Y'all won enough. Yeah. The Spurs had they run, definitely beautiful, so no disrespect to all the Spurs fans out there, but I understand what I'm out means. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm out the playoffs. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Golden State Warriors. And shout out to the Kings. You know, yeah. And the you Queens. You know, nothing after that. That's it. Qu Queens. He just walked out, man. <laughs> Yo, me and Heather been going crazy back and forth, man, about these King, uh, King, the Warriors and Spurs. You know, they used to dominate us, man. And, one thing about them tables, they're going to turn. they always going to turn. <laughs> Tracy, you want to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, uh, you are very, very hilarious and personable and electrifying, and so I fuck with you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing so much of your story. Fab, you know, we had um, 
such an incredible filmmaker and fellow man of the culture, Alan Hughes, right up here before you joined us in the studio. And he was talking about what troubles him is how narcissistic of a society that we've become, you know? And he was talking about even from the title of an iMac and an iPhone and just the emphasis on me, me, me. And I would say one of the flaws of America is that we have valued the individual for more centuries than we have valued community. So for someone who is having an eye-opening experience, you know, and they're thinking, dang, I have been focused on myself, but how do I let go of that attachment? Maybe someone who doesn't even see why community is important because they feel like everyone's always been against them, and so that's why they're hyper-focused on self. Talk about, like, why being an active member of your community is cool because it always seems like that's a hard sell like people think that's corny or there's no like you know kind of sexiness to it but everything flashy um one of one of the key components is all of the things that were poison were were the things that were we were awarded for we were rewarded with oh you so dope you're a real nigga mm -hmm. oh you're a killer you're a real one. You a prostitute? You're a real one. You out there really. You standing down on that. Go ahead. You really standing about she about her money. Oh, you a pimp? Man, you my role model. So all of these things that were actually created to destroy the community, all of these things that led to the devastation uh, and, and, and the destruction of what we were building from community moments and community times, those things became glorified. And in glorifying that, the, the the person that may have been the demure, laid back, chill, shy, but modest individual who felt like I was going to school, but I was hiding, that I was an intelligent person because I didn't want someone to call me these names and hang up under these monikers that they would give me that led to negative content mm -hmm. and negative context. Uh, I ran away from that. So being smart wasn't gangster. You know, that's why people get more love getting home from prison than they do graduating from college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in this days and times, the new role models have to come in and reinvent the narratives of what's cool, yes. of creating the cool. One thing with me about the community was everything that we rap about, everything that I am came from my city of Oakland. Mm -hmm. And it was everything because Oakland is a multitude of many different diverse cultures, community, mind specs. So in one house, you may have had your uncle was a panther. And then in the room downstairs, your other uncle was a pimp. Yeah. So you're getting uh, uh, the the mixing in of that, uh, 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 the potpourri of that, mm -hmm. where it's just these 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 crazy mixed in ideologies and philosophies and you're trying to say okay well which one do i do right you know, my, my, my mama a drug dealer my uncle a drug user my cousin a pimp my my sister's a conscious thought leader and so we have an ability to grab from several different things to me the community was most important because that's where the common unity is even in the word the common <laughs> unity with with community and it was always about watching the village and i think a lot of people that turn their back on the village that's a secondary term and primary that village has abandoned that child in old folklore there's a saying that the child that is abandoned by the village will later return and burn that village down mm. and what we're witnessing is the watch riots of our villages our villages being burnt down because of so many of us have created this individualism that we no longer care about that little kid that's selling candy outside the store and we walk right by him so that little kid says, this candy ain't selling. I'm finna break somebody's window. I'm finna rob somebody. I'm finna break into somebody's house because you don't want to notice me when I'm trying to do right. Unfortunately, we have so much money allocated to negativity. There's money in prison reinforcement. There's mm -hmm. money in all of these rehabilitation centers. There's money in uh, reentry programs. A person can get out of job and have more of an opportunity to be a model citizen than someone that's a model citizen. Mm -hmm. So mm. now we have all of this money allocated that's kind of like rewarding negativity. Like, oh, if you become a fuck up in life, we, we got some rewards for you. You on probation? Oh, we got somewhere for you to stay. You on parole? You, you did some crime? We'll do all of this. And I'm not against that. Right. Because I'm definitely against, with the whole, you know, community restoration and, and giving people a chance and second chance options. But what about these kids that are doing good? What about the kid that has a straight A student that is a straight A student that's not being rewarded because all of the focus is being on this kid that's dropping out? All of the classes, all of the mentor programs and all of the 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 the, the um available 
internships or for the kids that are at risk youth? Hmm. What about the children that are doing good? And so they begin to take on the ideology like, oh, I got to be a mess up for, to get y'all attention. Hmm. Interesting. So these these are the narratives that have to change. We have to start looking at that. We have to start looking at this child and, and pouring into this child. I said on an interview not too long ago about instead of just being a dad and being a mom, we have to learn to pull off that title and 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 pay attention to our children. Pay attention to what your children is doing. Most of most of the most people don't even know their their children's favorite color, their favorite TV show, what they like. They don't pay attention to their children. Mm -hmm. So now these are the same children that's like, oh, you don't pay attention to me. Watch how I get your attention. Then you on the news like, whoa, he did what? Yeah. Yeah. That and is the formula of rebellion. That that is yeah. it. Yeah. Like you're not paying attention to me. You're not watching me. You're not pouring into me. You're not, as we said, you're not giving me value. It's mm. dehumanizing. And so now that's and now you have children that are so forward mentally than we were because of the access to technology. They're able to age. There once was a place called a child's place. When we grew up staying a child's place. Mm -hmm. Now that child place is occupied by adults and children right. so we live in the same community mm -hmm. so your child has the same access to information to news to updates to everything that you have access to so it's up to you to monitor where they grow with that or what they do with that information because even though they may have knowledge or be knowledgeable towards things it's up to parents and mentors and brothers and role models to add in comprehension because knowledge without Application is just information, mm -hmm. and we have to be able to be comprehensive to understand how to digest this knowledge to come back in a reflection of the community. That was a key point for the Panthers, and that's what one of the some of the policies that they had. It worked then, and it can continue to work if implemented correctly. Mm -hmm. Mr. FAB, Unk, man, I want to man, I want to thank y'all for coming by, man. This is. Appreciate it. Man, man we don't even do the verses no more. I mean, we just said, we just. Our, these the, are the verses. These are the verses. <laughs> this, this, this is elevation, man. This is but, elevation. But that's man. always still available. Um, no, 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 no. We're going to get to that, but yeah. not today. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Today. yeah, that's, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't even want to do that today. I yeah, wanted no. to talk like this, yeah. talk about the books that we have coming out, and the Hyphy Hy Tour. The Hyphy Tour. Tour kicks off Friday, May the 5th, yeah. Cinco de Mayo. What's yeah. the first place on the stop? We're going to Bellingham, um, Washington, Seattle. The whole Hyphy era tour is just paying homage to the um, a movement in the Bay Area that spearheaded fun times, great vol uh, involvement, Keek the Sneak, D-Lo, uh, the Federation, the team, Oof. Turf Talk. It's like all of the guys. And then we have some spot dates with, you know, Too Short that's going to come out. Uh -huh. And the whole Hyphy era tour is just about saying – we never packaged it up where people can actually see it and just come out and have fun, man. And going to relive some good moments. Um, Executive Prince, are, we're doing all the merchandise. That okay. Executive Prince is our new company, our manufacturing mm -hmm. company. That's so it. we're That's printing up everybody's stuff, every every all of the clothing lines. So big shout out to um, that as another venture of something that we've been working on. And um, man, let's just keep building, hey, man. man. Shout out to the whole Bay Area, all of y'all guys that's doing y'all thing. Let's get it, Bay hey, Area. Hey, New Face said, shout me out. I want to say New Face was here. That's my brother from Atlanta, and he's everywhere, and I love his spirit and anything. We finna go down to Philly right now. We finna go to Philly. Cosmic Kev, Mr. Yeah. FAB, want to come? Hook that up. He want to come man. destroy your mic booth. Please hook that up. Cosmic I wanna cook Kev, that up. he want to, and I want to shout out Homegrown Radio, DJ Head, and the team over yeah. there. That's we played a yeah. clip from their interview, and that's where you talked about dads. Was on their show. They do a great podcast man, over there. Super um, dope. I'm gonna shout out to Dub C and CJ Mack. They got a great podcast that they're doing too. I saw them. We took a clip with Tyron Turner. Um, um, talking about um, Alan Hughes and Minister to Society. They do a great podcast there. Fab, Unc, I want to thank y'all, man. When I watch, I watch you all the time. I'm on the Instagram. You really have uh, carried this torch for mm -hmm. the Bay Area in an excellent way. That moment we all shared at the White House is something surreal. I haven't even been able to process it. The, all of us sitting there in those chairs and in the, in the so-called biggest house in the world. Man. You know what I mean? The that, most powerful house in the world. And we held court. That was. And we did it our way. Hey. 
yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you said, yeah. I can't even process it, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and close, I just want to shout out my daughter, straight A student. I love you so Ooh. much. And I tell you this all the time, and I tell you publicly, it's not about the straight A's. It's about the effort that you're putting in. And we're not disappointed if you get a B or get anything. I just love the effort that you keep pushing. And I want you to feel pressured by having to stick, keep up the straight A's. But so big shout out to Liberty. Big shout out to the Oakland Tech girls that won mm -hmm. national a state championship. Okay. Oh. What about Oakland High the Wildcats? Oakland High, boy, I know you're Oakland, Oakland High. Okay, you better speak the, on that I, Oakland I'm gonna High. I'm going to speak on Oakland High to the Oakland High. And, okay. uh, and we done, man. Liberty okay. Legacy and uh, Little Blood TV, man. Check they, that I'm out. I'm going to check out Little Blood TV and shout out to Unlord Rab over at No Vultures, my cousin Clee. I can't wait to see you, Clee. Yeah. We up, baby. Bay Area, we up. Yeah. We want to shout out Alan Hughes. We'll be yes. back Monday. Y'all stay on the right side of positivity. On that note, we have nothing left to say. <laughs>